remove the winglets, we're going to remove the legs, we're going to bone the legs and leave this as a crown. Okay? The first thing we're going to do is take off the legs. All sorts of strange names for different parts of the bird. This is the oyster. It's the muscle at the bottom of the leg. Okay. Um, an omelet, a chicken omelet on the menu. And it's oysters. It's not oysters as fish. It's the oyster of the chicken or oyster of the bird that's named on it. That's the oyster muscle. Okay, we're going to remove this winglet. Take it away. One thing, if you could, for some reason, collect all your winglets and make a lovely casserole, and you can eat them up, or you can do them like chicken for your after dinner, but you'd be hungry people. Now, we're going to remove, first of all, at all times, I always recommend that you remove the wishbone. Just feel it with your finger before you start. You can see it. Feel it with your finger. Feel it again with your finger on that side. Run your knife down. Good. Feel it that it's lifted out. Same on this side. Knife through it. Make sure it's lifted out. Catch both of them. Make sure they're clear. Just back up with your knife. Make sure you don't cut into the breast because you don't even want the, the good flesh of the breast. And the chicken, this will pull out. And the turkey, you'll have to cut it out. Use your cloth, you'll find them slippy, sometimes they snap. This one has snapped inside, so we're going to pull off one side. Cut this one up, right up into the joint. Where the bone is broken there, let's lift it up. There we go, that's the wishbone gone. Now, straight across there. You don't take the whole base away, otherwise you have nothing to balance on. That's a carcass. That's your crown. It's nicely tucked in. You can do lots of different things. You can put a piece of bacon on here to protect it, or you can just simply roast it in the oven. This won't take much time in the cooking. The reason we're doing it this way is that the meat of the leg and the meat of the breasts are two different types of meat. Leg meat is a uh, darkened meat, more, more, more lot tougher than the breast. The breast will cook in half the time. So what we're going to do here is completely debone. It's underneath. Take it down around the knuckle. Easy enough. Skin over it. Just be careful you don't break it. That's the needle in the leg. Just be careful that you don't break it. Uh, when it pinches you, it gives you a deep cut. Down around the knuckle. Try and take as much of the knuckle as possible uh, off because you don't want it left in for it to be chewing later on when you're going to make a nicely clean bone. Turkey is there you go. Nice and not a sinew inside. Lovely piece of meat ready for roasting, we'll just leave that roll for there. And the same, do the same again. Just you see, down each side of the thigh bone. Across the knuckle, down the wing, down the drumstick, round the inside. Try and roll it from the inside out.
Just do it by feel. Get the knuckle. Walking away from you. Shine. All nicely done. And another one. There you go. No sinews, no nothing is going to interrupt your, your cooking or carving of it. We're going to roll this, we're going to stuff it. We're going to roast it like this, we'll wrap it in some cling film and tin foil, roast it in the oven, and we'll be able to slice it down for cooking. Superb. We have uh, opened up the turkey leg, we're going to stuff it. Here today we have some traditional stuffing, uh, sage and onion. But what we've done with it, we've chopped a little bit of chestnut through it. Um, what you can do, you can put a little bit of apple or even put a little bit of cranberry. But do not cook the cranberry, put the cranberry in in its natural form. Because uh, we put in as a cranberry juice or cranberry sauce into it, it just runs. Whole cranberries into it, apple into it, whatever you feel like. Uh, you can put prune into it, uh, you can put fresh plum into it if you don't want to go to prune because it was a winter season, dried fruits, dried apricots can go into it. You know, any of the dried fruits that are substantially flavoursome, uh, you can put into it. Uh, you can put a bit of spice if you want to, but very minimal in the spice. And sometimes a little bit of grated fresh ginger gives the leg a completely different flavour. Mm -hmm. um, so stuffing is individual tastes, in it, but fruit, big time. Apple is great in it. Uh, the plum and prune, same thing. Apri dried apricots, absolutely stunning. In it. You've mentioned there as well that we put mushrooms into our stuffing here. Is there a particular um, mushroom or sorry chestnut that we put into our stuffing? Is there a particular well, no, chestnut? It, it, no, you must roast the chestnuts. It has to be a roasted chestnut, not just. Uh, and some people try putting chestnut puree in, but then they ring you up and say, "Chef, my stuffing tastes sweet." That's because they got sweet chestnuts. You know, the sugar that added yeah, to it. Yeah. Sweet chestnut is great if you're going to do a dessert. Mm -hmm. Nothing better to do a nice chestnut syllabub, drop of brandy, sweet chestnut. Make your syllabub with that there. But okay. for stuffing, just the roast chestnut, make sure we nicely roast the chestnut in there and try and keep it nice round, a little bit of clean film on. Some people don't want to do clean film, they'll just tie it. But also what we'll do with this one, I'll wrap this in clean film and I'll tie the next one. Better, uh, I, I like it in modern thing. Cling film helps it like this here. What you do is tie off the bottom. It helps maintain the shape. Yes. Now, are we going to poach, steam, or roast these? We're, uh, we're going to put these in a dry oven, roast them, uh, but to be in cling film, and cling film in the tin foil, and it will hold its shape. If you by poaching them, it gives you a very boiled kind of flavour to mm -hmm. them, um, and I wouldn't particularly go into well you, you can because like it's, it becomes a ballantine of turkey then. Yeah. You yeah. know, without the without the stem on it. So that's it becomes a ballantine if you poach it. But we're gonna put tin foil in this one and roast it. And people don't have to worry about when they put the actual the the their, their leg into the oven with the that has been wrapped in, in cling wrap or cling film. Cling but film cling film wrapped in tin foil, the cling film will not melt. Just once again, just tie it off. You're trapping the heat and the moisture into it, the cling film will protect it. That dead there. When that comes out, now it'll be roasted. When it comes out of the oven, we're just going to tighten it up again. Mm -hmm. Right? So that it helps maintain the shape. Let it relax for 10 minutes and then take it out and cut it. Excellent. And then you don't have to worry about string or anything because it's all there and it's had its shape. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. We'll do this one now. We'll do this in traditional manner. The big muscle, just level it off. The reason you level off so it's to be even in the cooking. All right. Once again, our stuffing all ready to go. In the middle. And what I say to people is, don't overstuff the leg because you want to try and keep that it formed within the, the meat. That's loads there. Okay. See coming out the end, so you know you have enough. And we'll just get a bit of string. Dry your hands. Dealing work with string. Some people want to do it in a big roll and wrap. It's not. It's better just simply, just underneath it. Little timber hitch twice. Turn. 
and gone. You can go the butcher's route of making a whole thing of it, but at home, it becomes too complicated. Done. Gone. And remember, while you're doing it, if you've got waste, make sure you clear it away. It doesn't end up once, twice, tight, turn. Back in the Boy Scouts. Timber hitch. And all the way through. Let's get up here. One, two. Oops. Let's go back a little bit. Now people, this is not a difficult thing to tie. All it takes is a little bit of practice. Um, Chef has been doing this for many years, so he looks makes it look easy. Uh, but re in reality, Chef, is this difficult? No. Just take your time. You know, don't make, don't get confused about it. If you want to put extra tie marks on it, you can. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't like putting too many tie marks on it. The only thing is about when you do it like this, you have a chance of it coming out the ends. Uh -huh. As it shrinks, yep. the stuffing won't shrink, you know. Um, so that's why I actually, what you can do with this here is uh, wrap it in a bit of tin foil just on its own. But be careful with tin foil, sometimes the tin foil sticks or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the uh, clean from tin foil for me is actually better. But you can do it like that there. If you don't have clean from tin foil on a tray, roast it inside. Mm -hmm. But then again, like everything else, probe it. You know, once you get to 75 degrees, it's cooked. Fine. And another thing that we people might have noticed as well is that we didn't season these before we actually begun to actually wrap them and cling and tie them etc. No, no. Sometimes, nowadays, well, I, it gets too salty. For me, in the reduction, we made the stuffing with butter. And we've seasoning in the stuffing. Seasoning that there. So you don't want, you want to taste the flavour of the meat, you don't want the ball of salt. Correct. Right? So the seasoning's in here. When you cook this in the oven, it'll enhance the flavour of the meat. Uh -huh. And when you cut it, somebody wants a little bit more salt, I'm just wary about putting too much salt in something. And the reason for that is because there's a very simple thing that if people can remember, right, is that you can always add to, but you can and never take, take away, away from. Now, in saying that, I would brush the breast of turkey and I would see it in the skin of the turkey mm -hmm. when I'm roasting this, because that's open roasting. Uh -huh. This one here, uh, just there's enough stuffing inside it. Yeah. If you want to come along and get the skin, pull the skin back down and stuff the crown, uh -huh. that's okay. Then you're adding to it, you'd use less salt on top. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's nicer if you're going to do a, as a family service, say even in the restaurant, when this is cooked, and that's cooked, let it relax, carve it, put your hand down, you've got the stuffing in here, mm -hmm. you don't need to be running for more stuffing Correct. in there, carve the white meat on top of it, you've got the ham, the stuffing, the black meat, white meat on top, make a drop of gravy for turkey gravy, and off you go. And and the fact as well now that we have like, whenever we're roasting anything, we, we always try and keep the bone on, right? Yeah. The fact that we've removed the bone here, is that going to lessen the quality of the end result? I mean, no. is it going to be what, dry what, or? What, what, it's stuffed. Yeah. The butter is enhanced and outwards. Uh -huh. So I will just make sure, like everything else that you roast in the oven, just make baste it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that will give you the uh, better flavors. I, I've not, I, if you just do it in the oven as it is, mm. yes, it's going to be dry. Mm. But we're not. We're going to roast this with the turkey. We're going to baste it a little bit when we're cooking it. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to open some salt that's from the inside. And the salt that we use has salt in it. By the butter, we have salt in it. So the flavours. And you've got the chestnut and the apples and everything else into it. So all these are going to have some flavours. So no, no, I wouldn't over salt.